Oh, it helps if you uh, take that off, doesn't it? Hello. Hi there. Hopefully you can hear me or not. That's fine. You know, I once did a stream and it took 20 minutes before anyone told me that they couldn't hear me. Um, Corey. Hello, Corey. Oh, hello. Wave. Uh, you'll notice that I am not. I am not Joe. Um, today it's just me miscoding badly. So for those of you who may not have been to an episode of our lovely show before, let me tell you a little bit about coding badly and Battlesnake more generally. And then I'm going to tell you about why, why am I here? What am I doing today by myself uh, while you watch me struggle with my code for about 90 minutes? Uh, firstly, let's talk about what Battlesnake is. For those of you who might not know, and this is your first Battlesnake stream, welcome. Lovely to see you. Lovely for you to see me. Lovely for you to be here. Uh, Battlesnake is a, an online programming competition. It's super fun. Uh, and the way that it works is that as developers, we build snakes using code. Snakes get uh, snakes can be built in any language. They're a web server and they receive the state of an ongoing snake game like the animated one that you see here. Um, and you make decisions for your snake and ultimately decide, given the state of a board, am I going to go up, right, down or left? Up, right, down or left. Yeah, right. I went clockwise. I wondered why I did them in that order. Um, and then your snake is placed in arenas like the one you see here with other snakes where only one can win. And there are lots of lose conditions. The win condition is you're the last one there. And it's just really fun, honestly. Uh, starts very simple, gets very complex, but you can actually build a really reasonable snake in not many lines of code, even if you are coding badly. So uh, Coding Badly is the show where we show you that you really don't need to know what you're doing to build a decent snake. And that's why Joe and I are normally here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Uh, or rather, let me talk about what we've been doing for the last seven episodes of Coding Badly uh, over the last three four, or four months. So we've been running the Battlesnake Coding Badly Relay. And in the relay, uh, we started with the JavaScript starter snake uh, provided by the Battlesnake team. And then we had Corey on. Thanks, Corey. You mucked it up straight away by jumping straight into complexity. And then Corey wiped their hands of it and handed it off to the next developer. And this continued for seven whole episodes. And we ended up with a snake that kind of worked, I guess, but was an absolute monster to work with. Um, and so that's done now. And this is the last episode of this season of Coding Badly. We decided that we, the relay was done. There was no need to do one more, mostly because it was going to be us grappling with seven weeks of tech debt. And today I'm going to be looking forward to, it might be the next season or it might just be a future season of Coding Badly. Uh, and this is how it's going to work. We're going to build a web application that has a snake logic in it. it doesn't have to be a terribly complex snake that gets entered into uh, into games. And then as every move hits our server, we're going to send that data to a browser. Uh, we're just going to send the whole JSON payload to the browser as well as store a history of them. And that's it for what we're going to do today. But then what we're going to do with that project is hand it to a bunch of different guests, one after another, not relay style, you know, isolated instances. And they're going to get to visualize Battlesnake games in fun and interesting ways. Uh, so today we're kind of building that baseline, really chill for the next, you know, hour, 20 minutes or so. Uh, the project itself isn't overly complex today, uh, but then people can build really fun and creative stuff with it in a future season. Uh, I've done absolutely no prep for today other than creating an empty folder in my code editor. And so I thought we could kind of go through this together. Um, for the time we have, uh, I figured if I started with the JavaScript starter snake, we'll be done in 20 minutes. So um, we're going to just build it from scratch. We can really chill hour 20. Thank you for joining me. I've got my eye on chat and I'll just be kind of chilling out with you. So. Yeah, so what we're going to do, we'll use Socket IO. So we'll set up a node server. We'll go through the Socket IO kind of getting started guide. We'll get data to a front end. Um, we won't build any snake logic to start. And then we'll spend any remaining time we have kind of getting through the, the first few challenges. And maybe before we use it, we'll build a slightly more complex snake. So it's a little more interesting for the sake of visualizing. 
Um, but if not, no stress. So that's the plan for today. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, let's let's go. So I've got this empty folder here. Let's uh, let's just kind of get started with a with a basic snake. So what are we going to do? We'll uh, we'll create a npm init dash y. We'll create a node package. There we go. Uh, and we'll npm install express. I guess. Uh, Socket.io, I think, is what the socket package is called. Uh, we'll touch index.js. Not sure if you can hear, but the uh, ice cream truck is uh, just turned up outside. <laughs> I can hear it doing its little music. That's uh, socket.io getting started. Let's take a look. And we'll, uh... oh, this has changed slightly. Interesting, isn't it? Documentation. I kind of just want a nice little installation steps for JavaScript. Yeah, look, we npm installed it. Don't need a specific version. Uh, other WebSocket server implementations. We don't care about that. We don't care about that for today. Initialization, I guess. Yeah. So uh, you can pass a port as the first argument with an HTTP server. Cool, cool, cool. Can we do it with Express? Look at that. That's exactly what we want. Let's uh, copy and paste this, see see what that gets us. So require Express, get create server from HTTP, uh, get server from Socket.io, we'll initialize a new Express app, initialize an HTTP server with that app, set up a new, uh, what's this? This will be uh, the WebSocket server. Just going to remove that comment. Don't think it looks very nice. And then when we connect, we'll do something. And I personally am not a fan of those brackets there. So let's uh, just console log. Uh, connected. Yeah, that's chill. Let's uh, take a little look. Node mon index.js. Cool, cool. And let's uh, hit up localhost 3000. It's like a hosted service or more of an open source library. It's an open source library. There are two parts. There's one bit that lives on the server, one bit that lives on the client. Um, and they, they talk to each other. So now I've, I've installed it. It's offline. It's, it's here on my machine. Uh, cannot get slash. That's chill. What we'll do is we'll create a public folder here. We'll create a index.html here. We'll just set up a battle snake. Battle snake. There we are. Cool. And we'll actually do want to do just a few more things here. So we'll say uh, app.use express dot static I think and then I think we can just say public and that'll just serve up that entire folder it's a public folder and it automatically restarts now hi mum apparently we're translating from Arabic interesting uh didn't get a oh yes why didn't I get a connect because I need I, I've skipped ahead server initialization fantastic client client installation so this has actually come for free with the node installation and it's served up on this so all i need to do here is include this script here how's the music by the way good volume it's just whatever generic thing streamyard has it's not uh, too offensive and then uh, we set up a socket on the client I think that is our setup. So let's uh, let's do this. Ah, look at that! Connected. Boom. So now we have a connection between our server side and our our client here. So the idea is, in future episodes of Coding Badly, our guests will get to do something here. This will be this will be you know, guest does something. But now we actually want to get. Battlesnake data in here. Do this. Let's uh, let's set up a kind of basic basic snake. I don't like these semicolons either. Bye. 
Pull that one. Get out of here. Right. Let's um, let's set up uh, an endpoint for. Well, let, let's take a look at the battle snake docks. We need a couple of endpoints here, ideally. Right. Quick start coding guide. Is this going to do it? Select the starter project. That's sweet. I don't want to use the starter project. So let's take a look at the API reference. So we have a get root, and this is used for actually setting up your your snake. Um, get an empty get request made to the top level URL of your battle snake. But the root is loading the page, so I'm not sure how this is gonna this is gonna quite play. That's chill. Um, yeah, that is chill, isn't it? Do you have to do this with the new snake? I think you do. I think you do the first time you set up a snake. We like that, don't we? Hello, Penelope. What's up, memers and dreamers? I'm dreaming that I can write some code today. You can use a path as uh, you can use a path as the root for your snake. I absolutely can. That is a perfect suggestion. Play at dot get here. We'll say uh, snake, let's call it. We'll put all the logic at slash snake slash. Yeah, it's a me stream. Hello. This is uh, coding very badly today. So we've got that. Uh, we'll uh, set up that route handler here. You know, we're going to want a few here. You know, we're not going to do anything with start. All we really care about here is a post request to slash move. So I'll do this work here. A snake slash move. Lovely. This is uh, this is where we'll send data along. So let let's go ahead here and uh, just return. Let's look at the uh, let's look at this. Here we are. Let's take this uh, object here. Should be called coding. Lovely. Thank you. That's not that's not how this works. I'll say uh, res dot. Uh, there we are. Uh, properly indent this and you know what i um i don't i don't generally uh oh docs inconsistent spacing that's chill so yeah we're just gonna have a nice hour and a half or so this is what kevin streams like we're just remarkably chill i don't uh, like these quotes here so it's so api version one what do we need here that's required author uh, if provided, this will be used to verify ownership. Mate, I don't even know. I don't even know what mine is. Uh, let's return to battlesnake.com or play.battlesnake.com. Oh god, you forgot the stream, Joe. But you did. But to be fair, I wasn't really expecting... Oh, you forgot the stream. You're not here. Yeah, no. We, we did make this arrangement. So uh, stop, stop it. Stop it. What color, what color are we going to roll with? What color are we going to roll with? Shameless plug time. Do you want to know what? This is my side project, yeah? We we do core skill stuff, but you know what? We're going to take this lovely pink here. It's lovely pink. Look, look at me. Lovely pink. Very self-congratulatory this evening. And yeah, yeah, we'll forget the fact that um, we just get RGB out of these, don't we? It's all right. I have a color picking tool for this. Boom. There we go. So uh, that will be the color of our snake. Head, tail, we can change the way they look. We'll leave it for now. And version. I don't think that's uh, that is required. Let's take a look. Version, optional. Everything's optional apart from the API version. Very nice. Uh, so that's the first thing we need to do. Let's uh, make sure this is all set up. Good. Okay, Penelope, I, I hear you. Let's... Uh, I can't remember the name of all of the uh, heads and tails. So let's let's take a look. I've been been bullied into this. Not overly, uh, not overly against it. The complete list of customizations. You can hear me on the heads and tails guide. Lovely. What we got here then? Here we are. Trans right scarf. That can be the head. What else we got? Now we're here. Let's uh, let's pick some. 
so many cool ones. I like this Crystal Power one coming later this year. I do quite like Mystic Moon, actually, I have to be honest. That's that's my winner right now. You'd think as the uh, host of one of the shows that I'd, uh, I'd get all these, but you know, whatever. Can't make exceptions, can you? All right, that'll be the tale. Let's uh, let's set up this uh, this snake. So what we're going to do, we're going to make sure this is accessible on a public URL. We'll do that with ngrok, mpx, ngrok, http. This is on port 3000. We'll go subdomain, coding, badly. Thank you ever so much. It's nice to know that I'm not special. It's, it's good to be humbled once in a while. Let's uh, set up a snake. Battle snakes. Let's create battle snake here. Right, what will we call this? Uh, coding badly viz. URL is https coding, what do we call it? Coding dash badly dot ngrok .io. Coding badly ngrok slash snake. Engine region. I'm not sure the, uh, yeah, because this is in the US. I'm not sure if they have more regions. I assume they do, but we'll just, we'll just the east makes sense, right? All of these are fine. Let's say uh, hit save. Um, so what happens now? Oh, yeah, get slash snake. Look, that's cool. I think that happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, here's, here's my snake. That's cool. That hit that endpoint. That's really nice. So now we have slash snake slash move. First thing we have to do is just uh, is send a direction. So we'll just start with uh, a left. Uh, I'm not sure that is actually. I, don't, is it, I think it is just a string. But I've put suddenly become uh, suddenly become really uncertain. That's the case. Uh, response properties. Yeah, right. It's a it's an array with a move. And you can shout. That's really cool. Right, so that'll be Jason. Move left. Lovely jubbly. And we'll just console log here the request. I actually think the core part of this is imminently going to be done, which is kind of cool. Uh, okay, so console.log rec, and then we'll just always move left. Go, go on. Go on, Brad. Send, send me a picture in Slack. I'll, I'll show. I'll show everyone. Go on. Let's do it. Let, let's sneak peek those new summer league uh, heads and tails. Okay. Cool. Uh, da, da, da. I think we're good. Right. Let's uh, let's put this battle snake in an arena. We'll do it from here. Actually, create game. Coding badly, Viz. Added Hoover. We hardly knew you. What else have we got? Block light year from the Blockly. We had extremely agitated Hoover. What was agitated Hoover? Can anyone remember? What was our first uh, coding badly series game? Right, I died in three moves. Yeah, I'm not all. Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Died in on turn three or whatever. Yeah, I'm not surprised. But uh, this is not what I expected to see. What's going on? There's a lot going on here. Console log rec dot body. Let's do that. Let's uh, repeat it. Create rematch. I <laughs> just love this. Is, this is how your uh, oh yes, the Netlify function snake was agitated. Hoover it was quite fun. Yeah, dead again. I love this. This is how your snake did <laughs> dead. Um, undefined, undefined. Am I? Am I struggling? What's going on? Oh, I think I need to. Ex some payload. What's the payload look like? What's the payload look like? Not sure scrolling through this is a uh, is is as useful. What have we got? I think I need to accept. Um, I think I need to say, hey, I'm gonna get a JSON payload sent here. I think we just go express dot JSON. That's all we need. And it automatically resorts the server for us. I might do some work to uh, improve the developer experience of this, like building in ngrok and uh, building in um, 
node mon to this app that might be quite nice for our guests let's let's try this again yeah de dead again oh, but there it is there we are there's our payload so now what we want to do every time we get that payload is we want to send it over to every socket that's connected which does beg a question how am i going to get it from here into here i think all i need to do is make this socket a global you know store it globally and then then do something with it let's uh let's do it let's do it here so we'll do this Ooh. Bit here so what we'll do is we'll go let socket i suppose every well we're only going to have one connected socket at a time for this because of the nature of the projects so this really isn't um, a bother then we'll go uh, socket equals s yes this is good readable code isn't it and then i think that so let's just try this socket dot can't literally can't remember how to use this thing. How do we send data? Events, emitting events. Uh, server. There we are. Name of event and payload. So we'll go socket dot emit. Move. We'll go rec dot body. I th think that's legit. Don't know. We'll find out. An index to HTML. What we're going to do here, we're going to go socket on. I'm kind of just making it up now. Move data to log data. Let's do that. All right, let's uh, try this again. So we'll refresh this. How's everyone doing today? It's Thursday. How have people's weeks been so far? Done anything good? I really do want to. Can we not? Yeah, page is not in Arabic. It's, it's not. It's not really in anything, is it? Uh, right, so we've done that. Let's bring up our console, make it less tiny. Today is Friday. You know, for just a moment, you made me think it was Friday today. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, taking tomorrow off, so it is it is basically Friday for me. Yep, surprise, surprise, we're dead. But. And all we care about is did data make it? Yes, it did. That's so cool. Mate, this project's basically done. This project's basically done. There's our payload over here. There's a few little uh, quality of life things we'll do here. So what we'll do is we'll just create a couple of variables here. We'll call it current and we'll call it all. Uh, we'll call it moves. Current and moves. What do you think? Current and history that feels good and when data comes in first thing we'll do is we'll say current equals data we'll say history dot push data and that means our guests have a choice between working with this current value um or working with this history value yeah that feels good i'm really not wanting to make this very opinionated We'll refresh that. I think our server doesn't need refreshing, just the page. So we'll oh, I've come back here, but actually it's quicker to just uh yeah, yeah, let's watch it. Yeah, we're dead. Okay, let's uh create a rematch. Did that happen? Yep, yeah. shock horror, dead. Uh but what do we we wanted to check here? What nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Because we never logged anything so we have current which was turn nine and we have history is every move yeah so now our guests will get the choice of working with current or working with history and you know what i don't really i don't really want to mess with it. what we might say is we might execute this thing called logic and we'll call this logic and we'll say um new move received and we'll, we'll log current that feels good you know and then this is the this is where our guests will do something that feels good let's uh, refresh that just once more see see how we're doing create a rematch here a new move received died in five died in six all right 
Excellent. So that's this kind of front end. That, that's all I want to do. I don't want to make this opinionated. I don't want to build in libraries. I don't want to make this more complex. It's just a really nice way for our future guests to do something with the way this looks. Maybe let's, uh, we'll probably spend some time building a snake, but we're going to go for another hour. So let's do a little bit to just make this nicer to work with. And then, then we'll just build some very, very basic logic. I think we'll avoid, um, we'll avoid walls, we'll avoid ourselves, and we'll avoid other snakes. I think that's uh, reasonably little code and enough to, to get by for the sake of uh, visualizing. Our guests can always do more with the battle snake, but that isn't going to really be the point of this uh, endeavor. So, um, you know, you know what I might be inclined to do just for our guests? I'm just going to remove the author here um, because it won't, won't always be me, will it? So, uh, yeah, let's, I really don't know how this works. I've been you know, intrigued for ages. Let's uh, take a look at how Nodemon works. Actually, uh, more important than Nodemon. No, no, let's do Nodemon first. So we can install it. That's great. We'll, we'll do that. I don't want to install it globally, though. And let's just uh, install it in this project. So, uh We'll kill that for a moment and we'll we'll install this. So what Nodemon does, I kind of just jumped into using it. It's when it detects changes in your files, it will restart your server automatically. Um, and it stops you having to constantly go back to your terminal, kill it and reopen it. For some people, they like the control of knowing I have restarted the server. But for, for this, it feels needless. So uh, how do we how do we do this? Just taking a little, taking a little scroll here. You know what I, um, what this has reminded me of? Uh, my colleague Luke actually wrote a blog post on this. The ultimate npm run dev. Here we are. I think uh, we might just be able to nick a bit of this. Nick is steel. I don't think Americans know that one. Now you do. All right. Let's do Nodemon. So. Uh, let's just take a look. What if you can? Oh, yeah, we could just npm. I think actually, Nodemon is going to be uh, literally all we do is dev. I think this might be all we need to do actually. Oh, not that. That. And then uh, we just uh, npm run dev. Oh, uh, it's not called app.js, it's called index.js. Yeah, super sweet. There's a few extensions you can add. So, you know, dash E followed by a set of extensions will restart the server every time those files change. That isn't necessary here. Um, so that actually was literally as easy as that. That was uh, lovely. Excellent. What about uh, Nodemon? I'm, I'm, what about Ngrok rather? Okay. So Nodemon on start. Oh, I think we will do this in code actually, because what we want to do is we only want to connect, like initialize that connection to Ngrok when we start Nodemon, not every time Nodemon restarts our server. So what we'll do is we'll actually um, we'll require these. Oh no, these pluses are copied. <laughs> I don't want that. You know what we'll do? We'll just do a little bit of a copying pasting today. Let's uh, shrink that sidebar. Let's maybe even get rid of the terminal for a little bit. Do this. There we are. Let's uh, go here. All right. So the const node mon equals require node mon. Once again, we use that to just automatically restart the server. Inside that file, add this example code from Nodemon to run it as a module. So we specify the extension on which we're going to restart our server for. I'm going to just up the size of that a couple of steps for you. There we are. Uh, the name of the, the actual file. And then, yeah, I actually think that that is what we need. However, however, I am going to do as Luke suggests, because if we're running index.js, 
Um, if we're running index.js, we, we then want to restart index.js with this code. So what he suggests you do is you create a dev.js and we will write our logic here. I'll fix that indentation in a moment. Nice. Uh, index.js and then we'll change our npm run dev to run this file instead. So when we start and when we quit. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, and then we'll just change this to nodemon dev. Yeah, so not even nodemon anymore. I think it's just going to be node. Yeah, node dev.js. Let's uh, try this. No uh, npm run. Dev. Lovely. Just started. And then if you kill it, yeah. Not sure why on quit. Not quite sure how that plays. Anyway, let's uh let's crack on. So yeah, so now now we'll use Engrock here, because this is gonna be really useful. Engrock will specify a port here. For us is 3000, but you know, you might want to specify your own port, and that's chill. And if you, uh, and so we set a, a URL here, so let URL. And then if URL has not already been set, we'll connect to ngrok on the port, and then we'll get our URL back. So let's, uh, let's do this. I'll just get rid of those pluses in a moment. Uh, remove that for a moment, right. Great, there we are, look at that, lovely. Uh, yeah, asynchronous function, so the await will work, that's pretty chill. And uh, when the application is quit, we will also kill ngrok. Don't need that anymore. And I think that's all... Uh, npm run dev okay what's the issue here oh uh yeah do you want to know what helps npm install ngrok that does help let's take a little look here because uh, i also want the ability to pass in uh npm run dev and it says cannot read under find in ngrok so we're not we're doing something wrong here but that's okay let's take a look yeah uh, also just make that a little shorter here let's take a look uh, what's the error say cannot read properties of undefined reading body error response to body all right so there's an error can i maybe see what it is connect retry ngrok client let's uh let's just take a look at their docs just in case they've slightly changed so, ngrok.connect, URL, if URL is not set, I did notice that Luke specifically set it to null, and I wonder if there's any specific reason for doing that. Yeah, look at that. That's a bit different. Fail to start tunnel. Session closed. Interesting. Why? Fail to start tunnel. I am already running an Ngrok instance. Maybe that was a uh... yeah, that was it. So there's our there's our snake um, URL. What I'd love the ability to do is I pay for Ngrok, and as a result of that, I'm going to get my chair. As a result of that, I can specify I can specify my subdomain, but I actually question whether that's necessary for our guests. Maybe not. Let me. Uh, my chair's down here. So we'll go on a, a journey together, and that journey is just uh, going up. Here we are. Hello again. Sweet. Oh, and you can so you can specify the port. Can you specify? Yeah, that you can provide a reserve tunnel name. Uh, your auth token. So you'd need to provide an auth token if you want to do that. I think, oh yeah, you can pay for ngrok. And what does that do? Let's take a little look. This is not an ngrok uh, plug. However, it's an exceptional tool. Yeah, so at the very least you can specify your subdomain, um, which for some of the work, big news, we're excited to announce the 
next generation of Engrok. What's that? Uh, did you get Did you get ball? No, Engrok Cloud Edge and Engrok Secure Tunnels. I'm not going to waste time on this right now. So um, at the very least, you can set your subdomain, which is really useful when you're using it for callback URLs and the like. Um, yeah, they have O built in as well, but what? Let's take a quick look, just more out of interest. Um, custom domains, webhook verification, and let's take a look. Pretty sure, pretty sure you just get a greater like quota, but yeah, solid, solid. So, yeah, you can pay for Ngrok. So, we could have our guests provide their auth token and then specify their subdomain but i just think it's unnecessary for the scope of this project um yeah people are going to come to it for a couple of hours and, and maybe not continue so i don't see this setup really taking place so you know we're giving them a random url that's nice the first time it starts but then and so this is the important thing here if i uh if i go ahead and save index.js it will restart the server but yeah, it will restart the server. There we are. But it um, but it won't give me a new ngrok URL. So that's really sweet. Um, I'm noticing the lack of like logging that I would have liked for uh, for this. Let's take a little look here. A node one on. I think what I want to actually do is take a little look at. Um, do a little dig into this node mom the other thing i would love to set up from an experience standpoint is live reload and i've never set it up before without like a desktop companion tool uh, so when someone saves index.html their browser just refreshes but you know what for a live stream that might not be desirable because you want to control when you hit refresh so you know we won't do that oh no because you're going to have to redo the match anyway so that's the kind of manual trigger so yeah, we'll, we'll do that too. Let's uh, take a look. Um, Nodemon on start. Triggering events. This is great, but I can't help but notice the lack of docs about this. Start. Am I... Start? Start? Restart? Where is it then? Because I don't just want Nodemon on start and quit. I kind of want to know when it reloads. Um, that's cool. Let's, uh, let's take a look at it on GitHub. Let's take a look here. Uh, lib index.js am i gonna have to do this like digging around endlessly to find the answer and you know what i'll do in here is i'll just say uh start that'll probably on start i mean there's something there you know if event type dot start i will just take a look at some of these things just kind of get a vibe for what the other the other options maybe i know this isn't necessarily where i want to look for that data but it might shortcut me to, to my answer it's literally that on restart which i probably could guess to be fair oh look how cool that is it'll show you the files it'll show you the files that um changed and then there's exit and then there's quit yeah so you know what we'll do is we'll uh We'll add the exit on there too. And then we'll do on restart. We'll just console log restarted at new date to ISO string. Give that a little go. Let's uh, restart that. Oh, didn't like that. Dot exit quit. Yes. Got on exit is more like it. So try that again. 
the server now available app, wonderful. And then we will uh, save index.js, restarted app, restarted app, restarted app. Lovely, lovely stuff. That's great. So uh, yeah, the last thing I kind of wanted to set up before we maybe spend half hour just making our snake a little more competent is live reload because I've literally never set it up before. And it's honestly been such an age since I thought about live reload, but uh, can't help but notice. Isn't the package called live reload? Excuse me. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, here we are, live reload server. Let's take a little look at this. Use the browser extension, which is not what I want to do, right? At method to add code to a page, which is totally chill. That's what I want to do. Uh, running live reload. Let's take a little look. Because we'll know, or from within your own project, this is more like it. So we're going to create a server with live reload. We're going to watch the server for changes, which is totally legit. You can also use this with a connect server. I don't know what that is. Yeah, we're not going to be doing any compilation here. Um, excuse me. Let's take a little look then. Right. So we add this code to it. So, so we're going to install it first, right? Because if you're adding code to a page, dot split slash live reload dot JS. If you're using a port other than this specific 35792, you'll need to change that in the above script. Well, yeah. Let's go keep. So right now I'm going to have to dump that in index.html. Let's keep looking. I'll uh, zoom in a couple of steps there. Uh, right, running live reload, as we saw earlier, from within your own project. Right, so that's the client side. It will happen in the page, and this is the server side. Nice. So we'll dump that in our page regardless. Index.html. We'll just pop that in there. Okay. Janky, but fair. And the port. Can we not infer the port? out of interest but you know we'll do 3000 for now but can we not infer that based on the port value uh based on a location sorry we'll take a look anyway let's uh excuse me you don't need to hear me yawning uh right yeah so let's uh let's save live reload here set up a server and we'll we'll watch it I actually think that might be all we need, if I'm honest. The server, create server method accepts two arguments. The first is configuration. The second is a callback. Oh, I don't know if my energy's really dipped. Uh, let's uh, take a look at dev.js, I guess. Feels like the uh, right place for this if it is an uh, allowable place. So we'll do all of this jazz. And can we just, I mean, we'll require live reload up there. Oh, you know what? This is all kind of config stuff that should live up here. Right, so require a server though. Have we used server? No, not in this file. And yeah, their name public. That is that is indeed the name of our our folder there. Uh, you know what? I might even uh, split out the the logic for the for the user on the front end, the the developer on the front end, just by including a second JavaScript file, just as a, a thought. Okay, let's uh, see if that works. Right, it didn't like that, localhost 3000 slash live reload dot JS. It didn't like that. So let's keep reading. Because I'm just a little bit like, where, where is this file? You know, I would assume it's on this port slash live reload dot JS and it would it would make it available very much the same way socket.io does. 
Um, yeah, I'd kind of assume they're the three things I care about, but maybe not. Maybe not. Hmm. Let's uh, go uh, live, reload, and express. Let's take a look just at this first one. Don't really want to watch a video. So live reload server. So we did that. Live server is here. And then we're going to watch path dot join. Don't I? I'm not. I don't think it's that. I don't think that's the issue. Live reload client snippet. So uh, with the server counterpart up and running, lives on a high port, is ready to tell if there's any files to change. Oh, so do we? Uh, what port? What port is it on? What port does it run on? Let's take a little look. Once I log that, I guess, and we'll uh, just restart that. Love that. That's super useful. Yeah, yeah, it is this port three five seven two nine for the library load server. Well, in that case, before I uh, do much else, that might have actually worked. And I was just using port, so let's uh, refresh that. Absolutely no issues at all. So let's try. I'll be so happy if this works. Let's try popping in here. Hi. Look at that. Boom. Live reload. That's super cool. That was much easier than I expected. Much easier than I expected. So, um, yeah, I think the only other thing left to do before we actually just try and make our snake not just go left every time is I think I'm just gonna let me just uh, do this and this I'm just gonna create like a little public script.js and what we'll do is we'll say function move let's call it oh move uh, data let's call it or console log the data Now I'm wondering, instead of logic, can we go, uh, we'll, we'll include it, script, uh, source, oh, script.js. And then what we'll do is we'll do all of this and then we'll just go move. And then what we'll do in move is we'll console log. We actually don't need the data anymore. In fact, now you know what we will do we will. We'll go current, we'll go history. And that way, our guests will, you know, hopefully be able to uh, figure out what's going on. So we'll go current, history, and we'll console log current, history. And then they can just do their work right here. This is the only file they need to care about. You know, a little bit on the HTML if there's any, you know, if there's anything they need to add in here. So I think, I think that's everything. The only thing that obviously has changed is our snake URL. But that will now stay persistent unless I kill node mom, which is pretty cool. What's in here? I did create a new snake, that is true. Let's uh, go to my battle snakes. Hello to new viewers who are not here last time I said hello to new viewers. Hope you are having a fantastic week. Slash snake. Save. Uh, problem detected, 404 not found. Refresh Battlesnake after error has been cleared. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Oh, my Battlesnake's gone because it can't be found. That that tracks, that's, that's probably uh, safe, right? Oh, yeah, so what's the issue here? Refresh. It's still not unable to snow to load metadata. Uh, let me just double check. Oh, what have I broken? I'll just uh, do this. It's a little less painful to look at. Eh? Yeah, that'll do. Um, let's edit the snake. How do I do that? We'll do it from here. 
I'm just checking if I hit refresh, it is still, yeah, 404 found. So we've got this HTTPS and this long end rock URL slash snake. Interesting. That should be, that should be good, shouldn't it? Slash snake. Yeah, here, there's our snake. So uh, let's just take a little look here. Aha, ngrok tunnel not found. But that is the URL I was given, which is uh, slightly alarming, I guess. Let's let's try this again, just in case it isn't us. Yeah, there's no space before or after, right. Just in case it was something about that. Oh, looks fine now. All right, whatever. And then just checking if I refresh this, is this snake still still good? It broke, right. So it broke on refresh. So there is a problem. There is a problem with the Engrok uh, restarting. Restarting. So Nodemon on start, we'll, we'll get the URL, we'll, we'll connect it. We'll get the URL, we'll store it up here. Then on restart, I, I don't really see the, the issue, right? In theory, that should be that should be kosher. It should be groovy, but it is not. This is something odd about these. Let me uh, let me ditch those. I've got this URL here, and I'm not going to keep editing the snake. I'm just going to do this. So there's our there's our page. We'll, we'll restart and then we'll refresh. Oh, it seems fine now. I think there was something up with those other events. Look, it's fine. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that because uh, I'm not convinced that problem's gone away, but I also don't understand why it's happening. So that's good. You know, we'll refresh. We'll, we'll do this. We'll get it to restart. We've seen that. We'll refresh again. Non-issue. Fantastic. Let's... Uh, well, that's all good. Oh, issue. Can it read properties of undefined reading emit? Okay. Interesting. Let's go back here. Uh, so console log rec dot body. So that's what this is. That's great. I'm going to stop console logging that because that's quite a big, quite a big payload there. And then cannot read properties of undefined. Yes, because there is no, because uh, there is no, um, there is no client connected. Just got to watch that, I guess. Next content was over HTTPS, but there was an insecure script. Well. But that's because load isn't an option. Blocked. The content must be served over HTTPS. It's also apparently a syntax error on script JS. Line one. I'm gonna. Uh, yes, current comma history. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't perceive this to be a huge issue. I will just make notes in here. So, what are our notes so far? We'll go with readme.md. So our notes are uh, must use HTTPS ngrok URL in browser during development. Yes. I'm sure there was another one. But... Oh, uh, yeah. npm run dev your code in public public that's yes, right cool so that issue's gone away for the time being we'll ignore that we'll ignore those errors we'll uh play this match out i'm interested why it went up when it's hard coded to go left but we'll just oh cuz uh, cuz it didn't connect right yeah, it's left this time. It's fine. Uh, but all we care about was, did we get 
Oh, did we get this running correctly? And I'm not convinced we did. You know, I'm just going to do a full, full restart. We'll, uh... Oh, you know what's annoying about doing a full restart? We need to... Uh, we'll do that just for, for reference. Uh, we need to keep editing the snake. So actually, it might be beneficial to allow passing in of uh, subdomains that we want to use. That might be a good shout, actually. We'll do that in a moment. We've still got a half hour. We've got plenty of time. So that's all, all good. Yep. So we'll refresh this URL. Then we will create a game with coding badly viz and we'll start that game all right got an error again so there is actually <laughs> there is actually a problem let's take a look quite a big error let's uh i think it's having issues with the availability of the socket the global socket variable cannot read properties of undefined reading emit and so that but that's on the server side here. So that's here. And I think it's having a hissy fit here. And it's because socket doesn't exist at this point. So I think I might be doing order, which is kind of awkward. Because if I refresh the browser now, it connects, right? Does it connect? Again, I'll just restart this and we'll, we'll deal with this uh, horrible thing in a moment. The fact that the URL keeps changing because I pay for it, so it shouldn't. I just wonder how many of our guests also will pay for it, right? Um, also will pay for it. Let's save that. Let's create a game. Let's, before we do this, just refresh, uh, not that, this. So it should say connected. Uh, Interesting, interesting. Is it not connecting? Is that the issue? Because I would expect it to say connected here. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Something going on here. Is it the fact I'm using the Engrok URL? But yeah, is it the fact I'm using the Engrok URL? So all right, so we've got this HTTPS value, fine. So we'll go ahead and change that back. We could probably change that scheme dynamically too, but yeah, oh look, it's connected now. So it's connecting locally. When it's through Ngrok, it's having a history. And none of this matters because again, this isn't the point. It just needs to work for the people, you know, trying to build something here on the client side. Right, so we've refreshed this, that's grand. I can't remember if the snake needs its URL changing again. I think this is a me issue, so I'm not actually going to spend much more time on it. 3C, yeah, that's correct. So let's create a game with coding badly viz. Hit something. We'll let that game play out. Oh, funny that, we died, and the data's making it through to the front end. Look at that. How cool is that? How cool is that? So, um, yeah. Only other thing I might do just on the front end, just to make that, you know, first experience a little bit easier is just turn that into an object. We'll just create a rematch here. Look at that, current and history, boom. Excellent. And I genuinely think that gives us everything we need for today. So with that in mind, shall we build some, uh, shall we build some snake logic? That'd be cool. So we will put our snake logic in here. First thing we'll do is we'll emit the move, right? And then we'll, we'll do our, do our snake logic here. So, uh, const move equals snake logic. And then we will return move. We'll just create this as a separate function. Function snake logic. Lovely. So again, this will have to return a string up, down, left, right. So we're going to just, every time I build a battle snake for the first time, I forget how to do it. Um, but I always think I land on the same, you know, on the same options, which is moves, right? So 
what are the viable moves to start? Left, right, up, down. And what we're going to try and do is eliminate, eliminate the moves and then return whatever's left. So we'll say moves. Is this the right way? Is this the best way to do it? Yeah. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll say moves. Uh, we'll say math. No, we'll say moves. Math dot floor. Math dot random times moves dot length. That'll do the trick. I think that'll return a random move. You know what? I've really got myself questioning now. Random, no, random item from array JavaScript. Pretty sure that's it. Logically, in my mind, that's it. Math.floor, math.random times array.length. Boom, look at that. Coding badly. I think I should be promoted. All right, so now we need to do the work to to remove items. So uh, all we care about now is, is this. And uh, I may even just for the sake of development, just in case there's any funky logic, uh, funky like weirdness here is I'm just gonna, just gonna comment that out. So we're not doing anything with the client for this. So first thing we'll do is avoid walls. What are we gonna do here? We'll uh, console log. Oh, you know what we, we need to do? We do need to pass in state. State uh, event dot body. We'll uh, console log state. Just uh, mostly to be completely honest, as a as a refresher. Let's uh, create rematch. Oh, error. Event is not defined. Yeah, rec dot body. Let's uh, play that one out. Yeah, create rematch. Great, okay. So this is what it looks like again. We've got the board. Height and width. Our position on the board. X, uh, the head. The head is really what we care about, X and Y. So we started down here. Wait, have we started down there? Whoa, 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 that was too... Oh God, there are settings here to just slow that down a bit. What the heck happened there? Look at that. Left, 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 right. No idea why. Seeing as we haven't written any logic. Oh, because I'm returning a random move because this is actually happening. There we are. All right. So we are down in the bottom right. I'm, I can never remember. Is the uh, is the board what's top left or where's zero, zero? Because it's different to what I expect. So I think it's in the bottom left because I remember being jarred by it before let's uh uh reference i guess post move will come with a game object a board object bottom left yes fantastic lovely and uh it's 11 Width 11, height 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Bottom left being 0, 0, which is wrong. It's wrong. But it's in the bottom left, so we'll we'll work with that. Okay. Uh, it's, it's so wrong. I literally, I can't even operate in this world. But it's fine. So uh, if zero is, uh, if this is zero zero, what we care about is uh, let let's extract some values here. So uh, const u head from uh, what, what have we called it? State. We'll do this first. And so now it's head X and, and head Y. So we'll avoid the walls. So we'll say if, what all we care about really is uh, if, every time, and this is why the origin being different is completely screwing with me. If our head is at 11, we can't go up. 
So if head dot y is 11, mm, yeah, I suppose we can do that. Yeah, if head dot y, uh, yeah, if head dot y is greater than 10. These are hard coded values, so let's not do that because we also have the board here board height and width. Board. So if head dot y is at board dot height, then we want to remove a value from an array. Can't remember how to do that. JS remove value by remove value from array. Uh, I don't want to. Oh, yeah, we'll just filter them out. That's probably the the easiest way to it. So if head uh, if head dot y x y this way is at board dot height, so it's at the top, we'll remove up from the array. So moves equals moves dot filter move, and we will return anything where move is not up. Hence left right and uh and down will be there if all four were already there so if head x is at board dot width then we will remove utility to go right and uh if head dot y is zero mm, zero Ah, I am now fully. I'm really. I'm not clicking the clip now, but I'm really hoping it's me telling you your origin was wrong because it is. Um, is that going to be zero indexed? So it will be head dot y dot one. Is this zero? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, we'll find out, won't we? You know what we're going to do just for. Uh, ease here or just for understanding let's just console log the head just log the head and we'll just watch the values what's the issue uh you pull on head you know what we're not gonna overdo this we'll say if uh head dot you dot head Let's uh, create a rematch here. Oh, I had another hissy fit. What was this one? Head is not defined. Yes. You dot head. Right. Well, that's going to just error, isn't it? Yeah. Let's create a rematch. Let's hit play. Okay, fair. Uh, zero. Ah, oh, but was that once I died? We start here, first move, five, one. So yeah, it is zero. So if it is zero, so that's all I was trying to ascertain. If it is zero, then we remove down. Uh, yeah. And if X is zero, then we removed left. So that should be avoiding walls. A little bit verbose, but let's create rematch. We should be avoiding walls now. We won't avoid ourselves, however. Ah. Uh, but it picks us at random. So the next thing we'll do is we'll avoid each segment of our body. And then we will, well, we may as well, we may as well just immediately go into avoiding all snakes, all snake body parts because they uh, avoid snakes. And I think that will probably round us out for today, um, to be honest. So we have you and board. What's the big object? Uh, board dot snakes. board that uh, sorry snakes board. so now we have snakes so what we want to do is so let's just think about this for a moment so four uh i think we're going to need to get a quick look at this uh this object to be fair before we do this let's just uh, console log snakes we'll just uh and we won't console log we'll console uh, with a depth of null and then we will see like the, even if it's nested we'll, we'll see it all here so we'll create rematch here so we have body so it's an array of snakes so 
four let snake of snakes or let or let part we'll call it body part right of snake dot body and i think now we basically just uh just do this but it does make me think just for i mean it doesn't really matter because i'm really building a serious snake i might just quickly abstract this and say um if you move mm, let me just have a think if you does this will this work i think well we'll find out in a moment you know i'm, I'm not going for code clarity here this is coding badly that's a bit of psychological safety for myself here eh? um so for u dot head dot y is equal to no so now we do need to do more because now because the the board is fixed the uh snakes are not and what we want to do is anticipate the snake's next movement right so what we'll do is we'll say if u yeah this is it right so if u dot head dot y Let's have a think about this. Because we want to say if we move in any direction, do we collide with a snake? So if u dot head dot y plus one, I guess, right? Yeah. Is equal to this way. I'm not sure this makes sense. Because so what we want to do is we want to no this isn't anticipating their next movement this is just avoiding them now i think that's how this works so if uh u.head.y head dot y plus one takes you into here we are snake dot body dot y oh yeah i think we can um we can adjust these uh these conditionals later and maybe add a bit more flexibility that way goes that then so if moving up is going to collide us with uh, part dot y, right? Then remove up. If going down one is going to collide us, ah no, oh god, I can't. This feels really like no, because we need to check. It's not just my my if my y position plus one no because then what i'm going to do is i'm going to lock these, these are um i remember now i need to use a logical and here and you know what i am going to do is i'm just going to uh, create function remove remove direction and in here we're going to do this this is how we're going to make it a little um a little bit shorter to look at and then here we'll say direction and just a little bit of safety here if direction and that way if you miss it out nothing happens so what we'll do for these move stop filters is we will just say uh, remove there we are that's a little bit that's a little bit nicer to look at, eh? Right. So what we want to check is if our X position is in your position and going Y is, is going to. So what we're going to do is say if head dot U dot head dot X is the same as U equals part dot X and U dot head dot X. No, U dot head dot Y plus one equals part dot y and we remove up that's how this works yeah uh and then if u dot head dot x is equal and minus one uh, minus one does this then we'll remove down then we'll do the exact inverse if your y position is the same so if you're on the same uh you, that means if you're on the same row on the same row moving this way moving right is going to collide you what a good observation you and me being words is uh is yeah slightly jarring i see that 
So if moving right's going to screw you, we'll do that. And then if moving left is going to get you, we'll deal with that. Uh, and then we might be able to widen the scope to say just avoid one space around all other snakes. But let's uh, let's just try it out. Let's open that up. Let's uh, oh need to play this through. Fair. Create rematch. Okay, errors, 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 errors. Why? Assign to a constant variable. What am I doing? Uh, yes. Let moves. As we are, we're not just removing an item in the array. We're full on replacing the variable. That's that's a very fair. It's a very fair error. Eh? Nice. Look at that. Not bad, eh? So that's avoiding us, and it is effectively avoiding walls, and it's continuing by virtue of a... Uh, don't know why that happened. Isn't that interesting? Because it can go left here. All right. But whatever. Let's, uh, let's uh, create a game. Let's create... Let's put several of these snakes in. Yeah, man. Let's take a look at this. Uh, and I might just try going back to fast because that was rather slow to, to watch. Yeah, look, eventually they do go out of bounds though, don't they? Which is a, uh, because they can go up here or, it, or in this logic set where we're not considering the next action, we could go down. Isn't that interesting? This snake does not work. Look, this one at the top, too. Just goes into the ceiling. Boop. Off you pop. Why? It's not the uh, latency. That's chill. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Well, in that case, let's uh, let's create a new game. Because if, if that's going to happen, it's going to happen anyway. Um, so let's just add this one. Let's play it through till it happens. Right. Let's look at this. Let's look at these last couple. So, uh, health 96 is, is the last move, right? So, uh, it's hard to tell because there's no number. What's this three here? Is it my length? I think it's my length. Anyway, so we end up going right. So let's let's take a look at this and try and work out why. What are we logging? We're logging uh, the snakes, so us. So uh, our body is made up of values, our heads, 10. But the board is 11. Uh, I think we are not telling. I think our numbers are wrong here. It's not if it's equal to board width or board height. If you're equal, you're off the board because it starts at zero. Easily done. Minus one. Minus one. Folks, let's take a look at this. Create rematch. I'm hoping that should perform reasonably well now. So... Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, it would, took too long to respond. So that's a fair, it's a fair reason for death. Let's uh, throw a few of these in. We'll just do two. And we'll just give that a moment to, to run through the game. I'm just watching here until we're, until it stops ticking. Still ticking down there. I think that is death. Let's try this out. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. It died of a natural collision. Oh, that's wicked. Oh, look, we've got another, you know, five to ten minutes. So could we, could we just make this a little better and literally be like, no, you know what? For the sake of, um, for the sake of our guests who will use this, I'm inclined to not be too opinionated, actually, because maybe they'll do something with the fact that snakes get nearby. I see that being maybe a cute thing, you know? Look. So in that case, I think we're, uh, I think we might be just about done. How cool is that? How cool is that?
Um, Brad, if you are still there, can you, because I'm not sure what time you were thinking I was going to end, but you gave the time of the next thing relative to when you think I would end. So based on now, when is that thing, please? And I shall talk about it. But let's talk a little bit in the meantime about, um, about what we did. So what we've built today is a little web application that runs, you know, npm run dev, and it will spin up a little development server. Thank you, Brad. And uh, what it will do is the moment uh, blah, I'm I'm rambling before I've begun. It'll set up a little express server with a basic snake. And whenever a move comes in, it'll push it through to a front end. Here we are, the front end. And we're going to leave this open to future guests to do something with the Battlesnake game data. Um, yeah, it's really cool. And the nice thing is they can add multiple snakes to a board as long as they're in it and receiving the board state. So I think there's something really cool about that. Um, we did a few things. We set up uh, we set up Nodemon. So every time the a file, it, oh, before I forget, I commented out a line, didn't I? Let's not keep that line commented. Here we are. Um, yeah, and they, they can represent their data, I remember what I was saying. So we have node one here that will automatically restart the development server whenever a server-side file is saved, should that happen. It also automatically spins up an ngrok URL for us. We don't have to run that in a separate space. That's really cool. I think that would be really useful. The one thing I've noticed that we don't have, uh, and we probably can get, but we don't have now, is actually logging requests that are coming in. The nice thing about running ngrok in your terminal is you can see when requests have come in. And we've not got that but i don't think it's a huge issue and then we also set up a live reload service the moment a front end file in this public folder is saved it'll automatically restart the browser for us uh i think that's really nifty i think that will be a really nice baseline for the next season or a future season should it not be the next one um, and i'll write a nice little readme and and pop this online for future guests uh, just before we head off, as we've just got a couple more minutes, I wanted to let you know, isn't that funny that I asked for some information about a thing coming up and now I'm telling you about the thing coming up. Um, Andrew, our lovely community manager at Battlesnake, is delivering a talk at Future Stack. That's it, Future Stack, the new Relic conference currently happening uh, about live, uh, live streaming and live coding and how you can do it as well. Um, whether you are an individual or working for a company. So as well as going out uh, in that in that room at Future Stack, it's also going to be right here on this Twitch channel in about 30 minutes. So at the top of the hour, you can come here and watch Andrew's talk. I had the privilege of being able to watch an, an earlier rendition of the talk, and it was really good. It was really, really good. Um, so by all means, come along. I think it's about half hour-ish. Um, and if not, you can always catch the VOD, but it'd be really nice to see you tune in live. So tune in live. And I think that brings this season of Coding Badly to a close. I say season loosely because I'm not entirely sure whether seasons are going to run back to back and you'll see us in a couple of weeks or whether they won't and you'll see us in the not too distant future. Uh, but you will be seeing Joe and I again and perhaps this will be the season's theme. It might be something else. I think it might end up being this. Uh, or this one can always come up at a later point and we've built this little starter application now, which is great. So uh, it's now half eight over here in the UK. Uh, so wherever you're at in the world, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Don't forget, check in here in a, another half hour to watch Andrew's talk on uh, live streaming and live coding. If it's something you're interested in, there are some tangible tips for how you can get started. Uh, and otherwise, I will see you when I see you, I guess, maybe in a couple of weeks or maybe not. Right. Bye.